Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Let's Play. I'm here with Chris from Lords of War Games and Hobbies. Hello! And we're going to be throwing down um, a 1,000 point mash play game showcasing all three of the newest things for Warhammer Age of Sigmar 2.0. It's weird to say second edition. Like, we were so far past second editions in most games that, like... It's Age of Sigmar 2! 2, two, two the, the, the tuning. Um, so this is going to be uh, an amalgamation to get, demonstrate basically the rules from Soul Wars, so all the new units from Soul Wars, for the most part. Because um, we're doing Mash Play, the General's Handbook 2018, uh, and then also Malign Sorcery, and all the cool new endless spells that you can throw at each other. Uh, in this case, I painted up um, one, two, three, four of them. Each side has two to show off. So it's going to be the Night Haunts fighting against the new chamber, which is the chamber sacrosanct uh, of the Stormcast Eternals. We'll show you the armies, we'll show you the table, and get this underway. All right, so here are the two armies that come, and a little bit of extra stuff that come in the Soul Wars box set that I painted for this game. So first off, the Night Haunts, they're the, I think the, they're the all-stars of this thing. We have two um, uh, sort of main units from the box set that I painted up. The first one is the Chain Rasp Horde, all 20 models here. You could run it as two battle lines, but to get the most out of it and showcase it, you gotta run it as one big 20 man unit, which is what I'm doing. Uh, and they have basically just stabby weapons. They're malignant weapons, like chains and hammers and axes and stuff. They're ethereal, just like everything else in the army, so you never count any kind of save modifiers, positive or negative. They all fly, because the whole army flies. Um, and you reroll hits of one if it has 10 or more models, which is super nice, just built in. Uh, then over here we have the Glaive Wraith Stalkers, and they're kind of an assassination unit. Uh, their drummer, who he's invisible here, his drum is hiding under his robes, gives them the ability to, uh, and there's only one like hero guy, it's just the drummer, so you'd always have a drummer, um, gives them the ability to fall back and still charge in the same turn. So you can fall back over a unit because you fly, uh, and then go and charge somebody else afterwards too. So he's a good way of getting behind enemy lines and stabbing the guys you want to stab. Uh, and then if they've got some special rules when they charge while they real filled hit rolls. And just like everything else, they're all ethereal, which means there's no positive or negative save modifiers. Now I also paint up a second battle line unit, which is nice to a spirit host here. I grabbed the Malignant's box set. Um, so I also have a, a Wraith and some um, Hex Wraith to paint up for later on. But just for the, the point of this, uh, I have a second battle line be able to use the Chain Rasps as one big unit. Uh, and they are basically the same as before, just three attacks, sixes are mortal wounds, and they are also of course ethereal. Then we have our character posse back here, uh, the leader, which is the Knight of Shrouds on horseback. He is effectively the same guy as the Knight of Shrouds from Malign Portents, except a bit, bit of increased outline. He's got 12 inch move, uh, additional wound, um, and of course he's got this awesome command ability, which is the Lord of Geists. Uh, and with the way the new command point system works, he can do this to multiple units in a turn, giving them all plus one to their attack characteristic of that unit's melee weapon. So even more than one melee weapon, you add plus one to all of them with an 18 inch range, which is great. And he's got a stolen hour sword as well as he did on foot. And the three new characters, we have the Spirit Torment, possibly the most important one. Tommy Two Chains. Tommy Two Chains, uh, or you know, Jacob Marley, whatever you want to call him. <laughs> um, he's, he's pretty great. He's got three attacks, fours and threes, run minus two, D3 damage. He's pretty good at fighting. But his big jam is he captures soul energy. If three or more models from the Bag Army die during the turn, he can heal D3 wounds or bring back D3 guys um, within uh, six inches. Uh, and then he's also just makes them reroll ones to hit all the time. Cause, cause he's just the, the Nagash boss basically. He's the soul of like a jailer who died, like an evil jailer, and he keeps everybody in line until so the chain rats have to like follow him around. Then we have the Lord Executioner with his big axe and screamy faces. Um, the screamy faces actually give him a five plus invol against mortal wounds. He just shrugs it off from the screamy face, which is pretty cool. Uh, he makes you minus one to hit if you're within three inches of him and you're a hero because he's scary and he's coming for you. And then his Executioner axe, if he gets a six to hit, add two to the damage characteristic. So it's normally just threes and threes, run minus two, one damage, three attacks. He can potentially do nine wounds if he, if he jacks up three sixes, which is pretty bananas. And of course, like everybody else, he's flying ethereal. Uh, five wounds and a four plus save. So that is it. Now, um, I've also purchased two command points as a thousand point game, uh, which means that I'll have a starting pool of three in my first hero phase and two spells, the Aether Void Pendulum, which just cuts a line across the table basically as it swings back and forth, and the Geminids of Ulg Hish, which are a terrifying double whammy of light and dark basically ripped into the, uh, the, the side of the universe that I can summon. Now, like all endless spells, I get to control them when they're cast, but after that, if I don't, if I go second during the phase, I can keep controlling them, or I can pick which one gets moved first. Um, but after that, they're, they're basically loose. <laughs> and the predatory spells, they're both predatory, get moved by whoever has the second action in the, that, that turn, or sorry, battle round, rather. 
Um, and that's it, so it's a thousand points of Night Haunts, my, my beginning of my Night Haunt army uh, from Soul Wars. And over here we've got the uh, Chamber Sacrosanct. Uh, we had two heroes, we had the Lord Arcanum on a Griff Charger. Uh, he's pretty awesome. He has a healing spell for healing D3 wounds. Um, his Griff Charger is just a normal Griff Charger as, as all the other heroes have. Uh, in General's Handbook, he has additional options too. You can mount him on some big, as yet unseen beasties, and he can also be on foot. Then um, he has Ethereal Strike, just like anyone riding a Griff Charger does, which is a super move. Cycle of the Storm, once per turn, when a friendly Stormcast model with an 18 inches is slain, just heal a moon and bring him back to life. So you can keep heroes alive. Really good for the baby knight um, in Cantor, because he can he just keep her alive. He cancels Apocalypse. Yes, he does cancel Apocalypse. <laughs> that's, that's literally what he does. Uh, and then uh, he has Ride the Winds Etheric. In your movement phase, his model can ride the Winds Etheric. Oh, sorry, that's the same as the um, the other Griff Charger one. I, I was confusing that for the Etheric. Lord Aquilar right. has the same ability. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, both of these wizards have Spirit Floss that they can crack during the game. Um, for uh, every one you crack, you do... Sorry, every unit within three inches of this model suffers one mortal wound for each Spirit Floss that was cracked. Uh, units with ten or more models suffer D3 mortal wounds instead. And allocate the mortal wounds to this model last of all after allocating to any other units that are affected. So what happens is you could actually die from it. You, you yeah. break them open and they, they wound you too. Um, he's got prime electrodes. Now the uh, the basic uh, arcane bolt has changed in this edition of the game. It does one mortal wound now. And if you get a 10 plus, it does D3. His is the old arcane bolt. It's always D3. And if you get 10 or more, it does D6. Because he's a master of lightning. He's... He's basically, he's, what's his name? James Hetfield. <laughs> um, and then finally his uh, command ability is actually tied to all the new units. So it's pretty important to um, to include the, uh, the the chamber units in the army with him. Now what's nice is these guys get um, battle line. The the sequiturs do if he is your general. Uh, so it, it makes his, his command abilities make more sense. But basically almost all of the sacrosanct units have two activatable actions during the turn. If he spends a command point, he can make them do both at the same time. So for instance, the sequiturs, which are just better liberators, like in every way for 20 more points, <laughs> they reroll ones with their Sigmarite war shields and then they hit on threes and threes with no rend with their basic hammer. So it's the best of the hammers and the swords. They don't need to have Lilo the Tyrants to, to get their buffs. They just do it all the time. Um, but they can also activate their hammers with lightning to reroll failed hits, or they can activate their shields with lightning in the combat phase to reroll failed wounds. So his command trait allowing them to do both in one turn makes them just like super liberators, basically. Then we have the Knight and Cantor over here. She's got almost identical abilities to the Lord Arcantor, or sorry, Lord Arcanum. Uh, they can both cast and spell one spell. Uh, but she also has the Electrical Storm, the Spirit Storm. Every unit, or every enemy unit within 18 inches takes a mortal wound, and then they're all minus one to uh, run, charge. run and charge yeah. during the turn, because she just like casts a big lightning storm up in the air. Uh, then, then we have over here the Castigators. They're kind of like Judicators. They can never become battle line. They have a very weird unit size. They're three uh, in the box. Mm. Or sorry, three in a unit in match play, but you get five in the Soul Wars box. So I'm not using two of them right now, which is a bit strange. Um, mm. And their their guns are basically on a six to hit. They do D3 hits instead of one against demons and night haunt units. And they can up the power of their bows to either reroll hits of one or to have minus two run instead of minus one. Other than that, their bows are 18 inch crossbows that are threes and threes run minus one, one damage. And they can bash you with the stocks too, which is kind of nice. So they're kind of situational judicators that can't be battle line. I'm a bit not sure about them. Um, of course, Lord Arcanum can use his uh, command ability to make them both do both in the turn so they can be uh, reroll ones to hit and minus two rend. I guess the other nice thing about them is unlike judicators, they have two attacks in combat, which isn't, which isn't too short. Uh, they do, yes, yeah, with their piece. gladiuses. We have the Celestar Ballista, the first artillery piece for Team Stormcast. It's just amazing. It's got a 36 <laughs> inch range, one attack, threes and threes, run minus two, one damage, but every hit becomes D6 hits. So, yeah. And when you're within 18, you can rapid fire it to shoot four times. It's to hit drops to five plus, but you can Lord Ordinator that up to a four plus. Um, and then it's threes, sorry, fives and threes minus two, one damage, and every hit is still D6 hits. Uh, it's a Bastion of Death, so if it has cover, it gets plus two to save instead of plus ones for a two plus save, which is super sweet. And it has new artillery rules. This is the only model. These guys are just tokens that stay within one inch of it, and you measure everything from the actual ballista. So it's way easier. It's basically a four plus save, seven wound, bravery seven, three inch move artillery piece. So very, very versatile, um, and it's only 100 points. 
for yeah, your artillery slot. Yeah, I think you're going to see a lot of these. Yeah, I think you're yeah. going to see two of these in every army because for 200 points, it's two units adjudicators worth of shooting. And I think you're going to start seeing a lot Lord, of Lord, Lord Ordinators. Stock too. up on those Lord <laughs> Ordinators, people. <laughs> that guy went from why to why not. <laughs> but at least we have unit liberators to fill out our second battle line along with the spirit hosts. Um, we just wanted to be able to showcase a full a full match play game here, and they're 100 points. You get eight sequiturs in the Soul Wars box, but there is a two pack of, um, or maybe even a three pack, three pack of yeah, yeah. Uh, easy to build sequiturs coming out that'll make it so that you can take a second battle line. So if you're gonna grab the Soul Wars box, you wanna play Stormcast, and you're not planning on doubling down with somebody, grab yourself that easy to build box too, because it'll make this a legal army. Um, and I believe it's also gonna fill out the other unit, because I'm a bit sad, but we're not showing off the, um, what are they called, the, uh, the big knights today, which are effectively the paladins for this chamber, because you only get three, and it's a five man unit. Uh, I didn't want to play anything in the under strength. And then we have over here the, the two mirrors, which are the umbral spell portals. Now they allow you to basically extend the range of spells. You can cast through them when you cast them. And possibly the best endless spell, the chronomantic cogs. When a wizard's within nine, he can activate them and speed up or slow down time. You're gonna just always slow down time and cast an extra spell that turn and reroll all your saves. Cause you just go Quicksilver and start playing Annie Lennox and everything <laughs> gets easier all of a sudden. <laughs> It's 60 points, it's expensive as far as another spell goes, but it can't. it's not predatory, so it's never taken over by your opponent if you just camp it in the right place. It's hard to dispel if you keep it in a line of sight, and yeah, it's so good. <laughs> so there it is, a uh, thousand points of Stormcast from the Sacrosanct Chamber, getting ready to throw down against the Night Hunts. And here's our table set up for First Blood! This is the um, core mission battle plan that is in the basic core rules. So. It's a five turn game. Uh, at the end of the game, you mark down how many wounds you killed worth of models. And the person with the most wins, sorry, you, if, uh, is it, if the one player beats the opponent's score by at least 50% or more. So if you got six and I got uh, nine wounds, then I would be a uh, glorious victory. If I just get more, then it's a minor victory. Uh, first blood, the first guy to kill an enemy model gets an extra command point as well. So you're gonna start with two command points because you purchased two with your army. I'll have two as well. Chris will be playing the Stormcast, and I will be playing the Night Haunts. We'll dice off right now to deploy. Um, it's a straight up 12 inches away from enemy territory. I got a four and you get a five, so you can choose to put the first unit down in the enemy territory. We also have a Witch Fate Tor and a Dreadstone Blight here, and two um, of the, uh, what's we call it, the portals. We're deployed! We have the Glaive Wraith Stalkers, my Chain Rasps, uh, and then here we've got the Spirit Torment, the Guardian of the Souls, Mr. Doctor, the Knight of Shrouds, uh, the Executioner, who I'm not gonna say the Gwart song title about all time, and then my spirit hosts. Uh, across from them, Team Sequitor with their Great Mace. Uh, we've got the Knight and Cantor, the Lord Arcanum, the Unit of Liberators, the Sequitors in behind, and then in the building with their awesome um, Super Bolt Thrower is going to be the Celestar Bolt Thrower, or Celestar, what's it called? Ballista. Oh, Ballista. Ballista. All right, so we're rolling for first turn. Let's see who's going first. Two. Four. So hero phase, now changed up from previous editions. You do not have to do all of your command traits during the hero phase anymore. You can save up and do them whenever you like. And the three generic ones everyone has now, you can use in the charge phase for one CP to reroll charges. You can use during the um, movement phase to automatically get a six for a run roll which is super cool, which you're going 11 with a unit of guys, uh, which is, I believe, forward into victory. And then you can use in the battle shock phase to just have somebody inspiring presence just stay in. So you can save them till you need them. You don't have to spend them right away. So start your hero phase, you're gonna earn one CP. All right. Go to three, as you always get one. And then the pool that you had increases. Now the pool, it never comes back, basically. The ones you purchase, they're just there till you go. So hero phase stuff, you can cast some magic. Basically. Some chronomantic cogs. Let's summon the cogs. Bring them in. <laughs> and they cast on it. Well, that'll Ooh. certainly do it. Double that'll sixes do it. will bring them in. Cool. Um, now, here's another inter interesting thing. You can dispel within 30 now. Wow. Yeah, so dispel range has gone up to 30. Oh, I so I do have a wizard here. Yeah. Let's see if I'm within 30. Now, Ooh. I can't roll higher than boxcars, but if I could have been in range, I was not quite in range. Anybody else a wizard? Uh, no, there's no one else here that's a wizard. So. I did have a dispel on the table, and range for dispels is massively increased. Now, important to realize too is that cog will work within nine inches of a friendly wizard, and I believe you summon it within, what is it, six? Summon it within 12. Now, I can only dispel it if I'm within 30 inches in line of sight mm. at the start of my turn. So if you want to hide it behind that tower, if I was within 12, I have to be able to see it. You want to be able to use it? All right, so I'll, I'll, place I'll, right I'll there. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> you could if you want. But now, <laughs> I did paint it. I'm glad it's on camera. So, <laughs> so um, now you can immediately activate it to cast second spell with her if you want. 
Yeah. Now all of your guys already reroll ones to save anyway with their shields. So that's what Mystic Shield has changed to now. It's no longer plus one save. I don't know how useful that would be, but you could cast it on yourself. Can I try for a second endless spell? You or? certainly can. Yeah, you so could you I could bring in some umbral portal spell thing. portals, yeah. Let's try. Why not? You know? It's fun. What does that cast on? It's on a seven. Oh, 11. man. Well, hot dice, hot dice. I'm not going to dispel that. Then you can drop that over there. All right, so this, the second one's with an 18. Cool. And that means you can now arc a spell through the Umbral Spell Portal with your Lord Arcanum if you'd like. Yeah, let's do it. Now he gets to use old Arcane Bolt. So if you want to try to Arcane Bolt someone, you can. He's going to super jacked Prime Electrids you. <laughs> All right, so he's the target. On a... What is that? Watch Who's going to target going to be? Uh, let's throw it at your uh, boss man, why not? Okay, yeah. that's a nice shroud, sounds good. 10? Ooh. So my Guardian of Souls is just within uh, 30 inches of your lower arcanum, so on 11 I can dispel this now. Now because you got a 10, it's going to do d6 mortal wounds if this goes off. And I get a 9, so you do d6 mortal wounds and then it shrouds. Three! Three? three? Alright. He has three wounds left, ouch! <laughs> and that looks like your hero phase, turn one. Yep. Or yeah, turn one, round one. Moving on up. Just going to start moving some... Some dudes. Liberators. Now here's an interesting uh, change. Everything's measured from the base in second edition Age of Sigmar. There is no more no base measuring. Bases exist and you measure from them all the they time. They are real. <laughs> they are real. They're no longer a convention from the General's Handbook. You just measure things from base to base. I think not to do his fort to victories because he doesn't want to get that close to me. Uh, you want to stay within nine of those cogs, that's right. And moving over as well. He's gonna stay within an inch of the portal. Now what's cool is obstacles have special rules now. If you're within one inch of them and you're being targeted by a missile weapon, you get plus one to your saves. Which is pretty cool, but only against missile weapons. And all of the for sale stuff from GW has a classification if it's an obstacle or not. So there you go, and then who's next? Now you can move through with your ballistae, but I think it's pretty happy where it is because it's he likes plus, his spot. It's plus two save is pretty super sweet. <laughs> so movement phase is over. Yep. All right, shooting. And, uh, these guys only shoot eighteen yep, for the so castigators. So they'll miss out, but you can yeah, shoot thirty six with the ballistae. So let's let's give them a volley. You know why not? Why just not? just just kill my. You guys look. You guys look pretty scary. Gonna, <laughs> gonna shoot the glittery yeah, stalkers. Sounds good. Uh, I get one shot. One shot. Threes and threes. Hits. So now it turns into d six hits automatically. D six. Two. two. And then threes to wounds. Yep. Rend is single two, shot, which doesn't matter to yep. you. So two wounds, but yeah, Rend is irrelevant to the Glade Rave Stalkers. Um, they have a four plus save, which cannot be modified. Pass one, fail one, so one's going to get sent back to the spirit race. Right. So it is, uh, yeah, it's time now to do some things. All right, well then that is it because you're not going to be doing range to any charges. Uh, end phase, I took one casualty over here. I'm Bravery 10. We are ghosts. We don't care. My uh, turn one in the first battle round, I'm going to go up to uh, three CPs. As I earn one at the start of the turn, I get to my hero phase. I'm gonna cast Spectral Lure from my Guardian of Souls to try and heal some wounds into this unit. Uh, it goes off with a six, because that's what it takes to cast. Just a spell. 30, so you can try. I throw a seven to beat it. Okay. If yeah. not, eight. Eight, you get it, so it goes I away. Out. I would have gotten back D3, or sorry, D6 wounds with a guy. So hero phase done. Let's start spending some command points. Let's spend a CP uh, on my Chain Rasps to four into victory. And that means I automatically uh, roll a six for a run here. So I'm gonna move it up 12. So eight and four more. Now they all fly, so I'm not worried about this terrain here. And we'll just move the line forward. Spend another one Oof. on my Agreed. Spirit uh, Guardian of Souls here. So he's gonna run as well. I'll just go hang out beside That's the spell good. portal. Oh. And Shroud's gonna go, he's gonna run. He's Think oh, yeah, he goes 12. Never mind. Oh, Nothing matters. He was 13 now. Just goes and hangs out. Eh, I'll put him over here, actually. So he's within mm. Barricade Town. Not that his... Actually, his save can't even be improved, so it's irrelevant. <laughs> <laughs> his theory doesn't really matter. Using cover as a That's ghost. Right. <laughs> let's, let's run with the Lord Executioner. <laughs> he's gonna run 4 plus 6 is 10. And again, he flies as well. So two extra inches just hop on the other side of this. Run with the Spirit Hosts. They go two as well, so they go a total of eight. End up in behind. Mm -hmm. Being spirit hosts. Chain Rasp, sorry, the, um, was it the Guardian? No, the Tommy two uh, Spirit Torment is gonna run. And he goes 12, oh. hooray! So he ends up right with his friends. Heads over the wall. It's, they run one extra inch, so they're gonna go seven. Missile weapons, uh, every rants or charges. So that's rolling to see who goes first during the next battle round. Now, there are no predatory spells out, because that could make this important. And the other change in this edition is, 
Um, if we tie, the person that went first last turn can choose to go first or second to avoid having double rounds. Um, so the ties basically go to the defender in this case, based on who went, who went last. Let's roll off right now, see who's first. I get a five. You get a six. Oh. Would you like to go first or second? I'll go first. I, I assumed. <laughs> she's going first. Ah, uh, she's going to go first. So okay. She's still using that, I guess, right? So she's got If she wants to, yeah. So she can choose either one can use it. Either one. I'll use the. Uh, I'll I'll use it with him then instead. Okay. She's going to cast her storm ability. Spirit her spirit storm. storm. Uh, which needs a seven, I believe. Yep. Drop it like it's hot. Goes I'm off a nine. Running. I won't bother trying to dispel it. Okay. So, so everyone gets hit with one mortal wound. Every unit, yeah. So we're gonna lose a chain rasp. All of these guys are gonna get wounded. He'll go down to two. And one of these spirit hosts has two wounds left. You say you. Next up, hand bolt from the big guy into one of the shrouds. Into my wizard. Perfect. Okay. Five uh, goes off. Uh, yeah, barely. I'll try and spell it. Five doesn't do it. D3. Three goes two. to two. So two wounds left on the. Guardian of Souls. I'm gonna Mystic Shield her because the he's, he's getting rerolls from that thing. Yep. So uh, goes six. off. Yep. yep. And I can't spell. Phase. Walking up five. Do, 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 do. Yes, sir. Let's go, Team Sequidors. Outside of three of Team Chainrass Horde. Okay. Same with these Liberators. Outside of three. Heading through the Azerite Ruins. Come fight some spooky ghost mans. Then Kidder is going to fall back. And then Big Boy is going to go in. Just going to walk around. Think movement's done? Yeah, let's do some shooting. All right, guns clock. Who's shooting first? Let's go with, with the 18. Ba Balista. Balista, yeah. All right, so you're going to rapid fire now. So it gets four shots instead of one, but it hits on fives. But each hit is still D6 hits. Yeah. If you can YOLO this, it's going to be pretty sweet. Got to YOLO. All right, do it. Big unit. On fives. Not no, a one. No. no. <laughs> so no hits there. Uh, you got your sequiturs now. Just hit your castigators rather. We your crossbows back there. Yeah. My night haunt target, you which know, means we're, we're gonna be we're gonna be crazy here. We're okay. gonna jack up their uh, attacks to reroll to hit. Okay. So you're using the Lord Arcanum's ability, you're gonna be using both here. Actually, there's no point in doing that because I have unmodifiable armor. So well, they, they can just do it hits. for free. They get real hits with the for free. You can just do that one. Oh, you're right. Yeah, you there's no reason to do it. Oh, you only use a command point if you do both. Right. That's right. So they're gonna yeah real to hit ones I think. Ones okay. To hit. And we're gonna target with 18 inches. Let's try and get this guy. Get the so spirit torment. Right. So you might as well hit him because you're within three. I'm within three inches of a unit of three or more models. So so, so I got one hit. One hit. D three. It's D three because you rolled a six and it's against. Yep. I now actually check. Does it say unmodified rolls of six or six? That's a good question. It's a six plus hits. It's only one hit because you're minus one to hit him because he is a character, a hero within range. So it's not actually a six, that was a five. So threes to wound, so he takes a does. wound at round one, it doesn't matter. Which is irrelevant because he's a ghost for a four plus save. Makes it. So now I'm going to charge. Who's going to charge first? Let's charge with Libby Town. Okay, Liberators, they get a 10 inch charge, which means they can charge almost anywhere. Wrap around the back here. Piling in. Doors. Okay. Doors. snakes. They're Whoa. good. Ten as well. You're gonna fight a lot of heroes. Yeah. Or not. <laughs> or not. We would just safely slam it over here. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> just, just go right in the front. Leave room for, for him. For the Lord Arcanum charging yeah. as well. Okay. And we'll also charge. Take, take on this chain rasp board. Piles in. Combat phase. Do you want to activate any abilities? I'm going to super juice them. Just all right. So spend a command charge. point, yep. and now they can use both their abilities. They can reroll all failed saves and rolls to hit. Who's going to attack first? Great mace. First. Makes sense. Threes and threes. He rerolls to hit. He rerolls to hit. Amazing ability. That's right. So both hits, and, and then threes, threes to wound. Okay. And then it's red minus one, but it's five up saves because the chain rasps are ethereal. Yeah. And then damage two. Failed two. So four damage so far. That's hit on threes as well. Rerolling because and rerolling everything. That's right. <laughs> Threes and threes, because they're just better liberators. Wow. These are, guys are fantastic. And it looks like five wounds. Yep. So again, there's no rend on there, just their maces. Uh, but I have an unmodifiable save anyway, because I'm ethereal. So I pass two, and that means three go down, so seven damage total. And that means seven of these guys get eaten. Let's Gotta remember too, uh, not that I did roll any sixes, but their maces also explode. That's against right. Demons and I That's crazy. Yes. Game. 
So now I'll get to choose, and we will have the Chain Rass pile in and fight. So everybody pile in. So now the pile in rules the way they work now, you just have to end your pile in closer to the closest model. So it's a lot more forgiving now for piling in. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you can also pile in even if you're touching. That's right. You can as well, yeah. Yeah. yeah which is just quite nice. Closer. It, it, it just makes it so it's a little less obtuse, basically. Yeah. With the fighting. Yeah, people, you had this like separate game developing where people were making block, like blocking the exactly. piling in, which I don't think was the intention of the game. No. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to put as many as possible into these guys. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. This is my unit size. I have more than 10 models. I'm going to reroll ones to wound. I have plus one to wound because I'm within range of the Nightmare Lantern. Uh, and I reroll failed hit rolls of one because of the Spirit Torment being nearby. Only fours and fours. We're fours and threes right now. Uh, and actually, sorry, I have an additional attack, I think, for my, my, my champion as well. Rerolling ones to hit. Well, that was pretty good. So there's nine hits with the first roll. Second roll. Rolling ones. There was no ones this time. So nine plus five is 14. The hero gets an extra attack and he misses. So 14. Wounding on threes because I'm plus one to wound because of the Nightmare Lantern. This is 12. I'll roll two of these. So I roll all my ones to wound just because there's lots of them mm. on threes. Uh, and then I get one additional one from the bot. Sorry, two additional ones. So that's going to be a total of. Five, ten wounds. Friend, you're just four plus, rerolling everything right now because you're activated shields. For Sigma. Not too bad. So half. the odds, yep. And Better two, so half. lose a guy. Lose a guy. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of removing him, you're gonna heal one wound using your Lord Arcane's ability to resurrect a guy or keep him on his feet, basically. So that one dead guy turned into no dead guys. You have your uh, liberators that could pile in because they did charge this turn. And one guy will make it at least. No, they're not within three. You can still pile in. You get within one. You fight. Oh, okay. Because you charge this turn. You can always pile in if you fight. Uh, so it has to be the closest thing. You think it's that guy or this guy? I don't know. Maybe this guy. It's probably it's this like, guy. Yeah, okay. It's <laughs> okay. So the Great Blade will get to fight. Attack, threes and fours. Sorry, two docks, threes and fours. One hit. Force to wound, no wound. Oh, I can pile my spirit tournament because you got close. He's gonna pile it over here and fight some liberators. Same buff supply to him. So he hits on fours, you're rolling ones, but he wounds on twos. Ha! So fours are only ones, nothing. That's more like it. And then he wounds on two, so he's plus one to wound. Wounds on two, minus. Against the Libby's? Yeah, against the Libby's. I think it's minus two. Ooh. Minus two, yeah. Okay. So six up, you're rolling ones. Six up. And you're one. One, six is. Oh. Nope, it's D3 damage. Yeah, do it up. So there's Smoke three damage. The so it kills a guy, and somebody's got a floating wound. Got your Arthur. Lord Arcanum who can fight. This guy is a beast. He's pretty good. Uh, so he's going to do his Aether Staff first. It's the best staff I've ever seen in my life. It's, it's pretty great. Four attacks, threes. It's basically threes the, and threes. the Tempestus Hammer with slightly less to wound. Threes to wound. Yeah. So and, two. And we got a round of one. This doesn't matter. And yeah. he's going to do D3 damage. So five up first. saves. Yeah. Pass one, fail one. D3 damage. Boom. Two Kills damage. two Chain Rasps. Razor, Razor Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Hippo Donkey. Three to hit. Uh, one hit and three to wound. Doesn't no. wound. Looks like all the units that could pile in and fight right now. So we are down to uh, team team me. All right, battle shock team. So I've taken a whole mass of casualties from my chain rasps. We took five, ten casualties. I'm gonna spend a CP and go to zero, and inspiring presence them, and that way they will no longer be forced to make a battle shock test. One here. If you roll six, you'll fail. Okay. So I'm gonna get that CP back now because sort of my hero phase. I'm gonna generate one. And it's time for some magic. We'll summon guys back, so we're going to use a big dial over here to mark how many wounds you've killed, because potentially guys could come back. Um, and it's time for me to start moving. I mean, casting spells. That's, that's totally what I meant. So casting spells. So <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I'm going to cast... Do I want to heal? Or do I just want to kill you? I'm going to summon the Aether Void Pendulum. Ooh. Cast on a six. Let's see how we do. Get an eight. Would you like to try and dispel it? Yeah, I'm gonna try with her. Okay. Nope. I'm within one inch of this spell portal. Mm -hmm. So instead of placing this wholly within six of me, I'm gonna place it wholly within six of the spell portal. Just toss it in the backfield <laughs> over here. Um, and then it immediately travels eight inches. Uh, so it's within six of this, which will be the origin point of the spell. And it's gonna go to here in a straight line. And I just want it to touch. It's gonna clip all this stuff. So it's gonna clip, clip, and then and it's gonna go straight line. Now it keeps traveling this direction forever. So I gotta go like this. I don't think I'm actually able to get them. 
Okay. Just yet. It's going to have to move again to do it. Like around here yeah. right now. Before you use the facing of this, I'm just going to put it low. Okay. We know it's up yeah. high. Yeah. You have to keep the facing of this right because it keeps traveling in this direction forever. It's a predatory spell, but you don't actually control the uh, the direction it goes afterwards. It just keeps swinging. It just goes whoosh. Now, everything it moved over or that ends within one inch of, which unfortunately won't be the sequiturs, take D6 mortal wounds. So let's see what happens to uh, the Night Arcanum. <laughs> she takes four. One wound left. And then the Ballistae has how many? Seven? I don't think I can kill it in one go. But it's going to take three. And that is top of the hero phase. Let's go to the movement phase. Lord Executioner is going to go. And he's going to move his six. And just stay outside of three. Weirdos, just going to come. Stay outside of three, ready to party. Knight of Shrouds, he'll move his 12. Go over to here. And the Glaive of Stalkers will come back and just stay outside of three. So he's going to be outside of three as well. Time to get to shooting. Hey, look, I'm done shooting. Now we're going to charge. Let's see where we can go. So let's start off with the Knight of Shrouds. He's going to go six. Charge into here. Beh. The Glaive Wraiths are going to go eight and just wrap around, staying within one. Executioner, he's going to go seven. That's pretty super sweet. And he'll go over to there, slowly inching towards your boss. Team Spirit Host <laughs> <laughs> to go two and fail. Now I'm going to spend my CP to reroll that because I can and hope I don't need this for Battle Shocks later. And we make it. Yay. CPs for, the, for life. Yes, CPs for rerolls. Looks like it's time to start fighting. So who do we want to fight with first? I would love to go with the Knight of Shrouds. Do you need CP abilities? I'm shoot juice up. Both hits and wounds, hits and wounds for yeah. CP. So you go to one, and I'm going to start fighting. So right now, the Knight of Shrouds uh, is going to have four attacks, hitting on threes with his uh, Blade of Stolen Hours. Uh, and he's going to reroll once because of the Spirit Torment. But he hits with everything anyway. Ooh. And then he gets plus one to wound from the Nightmare Lantern, so he wounds on twos. Mm, juice. So there's four wounds at minus one rend. On Olivia's? Yep. Five plus for Sigmar. Whoa! Real ones? Oh. How, how dare you? Damage <laughs> two. How dare you? Damage two. So it's two uh, damage so far. And then his uh, Steed's Ghostly Hooves and Teeth. Yep. Two attacks hitting on fours. Wounding on fours now instead of fives because of the plus one wound. Two wounds, uh, no rend. Four plus. And no rerolls, so it kills another guy. And you may now choose someone to pile and fight with. Is it gonna go? Yeah. And you know what? We'll, uh, we're gonna throw four attacks backwards. Okay. Into the. And then the other one. three guys are just gonna hit the unit. Okay. Guys First, so so perfect. he's gonna hit the spirit hosts. They're gonna hit the uh, no, chains. He's gonna, oh, he's still within an inch. Okay, yeah, I see. Okay, got it. Uh, so the guys shooting back, including the character uh, prime, the prime, or so uh, five guys. Therese. Are you rolling to hit? Yep, because you've activated your maces. Activate. And three to wound, because it's always three to wound. Uh, three. And that's it. So yep. three. We'll save. And I've got four wounds left. Pass two, fail two, so he goes down to two wounds. Into the, the chain rasps. Yeah, the mace first on sixes is going to do explode. Ooh. And it does. And I'm going to reroll this one. Oh. So it turns into D3. D3. Three. 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 Uh oh. Three's to wound. Three wounds. All wound. All, All right, so damage two. Five, five up saves, I lose six guys. <laughs> Take that, ghost. Pass two. Ooh. So only take two. Yeah. I believe uh, Korg said, piss off, ghost. <laughs> there you go. So two dead. And then the, the other two guys into the spirit suits. We're rolling to hit. Gotta love these guys. And... Of them. Three, two. Two. Five ups. Pass nice. them both. Right. And well, we've got the Lord Arcanum left, but let's do the spirit torment. Dax hitting on fours. Two hits. Uh, Rerolling ones, because yeah. of his friend being nearby. And then twos to wound, because he's plus one to wound from the lantern. And that's oh. three at minus two. Libby's! The one? Nope. No. Uh, and that means he is going to do 2d3 damage. Four. Just two. Okay. You, you can pound and fight with Lord your Lord Arcanum. Arcanum. Well, Stab the Spirit Torment, because you've got your... We'll go into here, yeah. Okay, so the feet into the chain rasps, everything else into him. Yeah. So the staff into the Tommy Two Chains. Oh, not very good. One. Wounds. All right. So he's got his four up, unmodifiable. Nope. Takes two. Takes two. D three. D three. Takes two. Goes down to two. Three from the Griffin into the chain rasps on Some threes. Mortal wounds. No, this isn't Drake off. Oh no, yeah, you're no, thinking on sixes to hit. He does mortal wounds. Isn't it rent? Cool. And then one no regular saves. Okay. So one more chain rasp dies. Over here. 
He's dead. All right, time to fight some more. Let's do some spirit hosts. Six attacks each. I forgot how good these guys are. So that's gonna be 18 attacks. Fives and fours, but sixes are mortal wounds. So it's only two mortal wounds. Okay. But I hit on fives. So that's one, two, three, four more hits. And then forced wounds. Nothing else. You do your save a guy thing, but what happened one, is two, yeah. he'd die, you'd bring him back, and the next mortal wound would flow through and kill him again because the mortal wounds keep splashing. Yeah, that's a little off. Uh, actually, no, no, because you'd apply all the damage at once, yeah. he'd die, then you bring him back to life with one wound. So they just, you'd have this weird situation where two guys have one wound on them. Yeah, you have two one wound models now, because the way that happens is mortal wounds are allocated just like any other model, or any other wounds, they just go through automatically. So you allocate all your models, or your wounds, then you do slain models, then his ability procs to bring a guy back with one wound. So, you got two guys with one wound. Not that it's gonna matter in a second. Excuser against the guy who's got three attacks, threes and threes, three rolling ones. And that's gonna be damage three. Oof. So these two hits, and yep. then it's uh, threes to wound. Yep. That one wounds. That one also wounds. Wound rolls oh, are okay. damage plus. It, it, you actually, it's not on hits. So two, uh, one's damage three, one's damage one. So minus two, you're safe. So, so six uh, is re-rolling. Heavy damage one? Yep. And re-rolling. So you're rolling everything. Nope. And then the damage two, or damage three one. Nope. And re-rolling. Nope. So you take four wounds total. One, so two. three guys die. Yep. Another guy's gonna die too. So. His disembodied skulls when he got spirit stormed on a five plus he negates it. No, nope, he still took it. So the spirit skulls actually negate mortal wounds. Um, and then we have the chain rasps going, and they'll all just pile to be with an inch of the sucklers again. Not enough to reroll ones to wound right now, but there's mm -hmm. or not enough to get pull. No, yeah, that's right. It's not reroll ones to wound. It's plus one to wound. Sword dude. Sword dude. Hits once. Wounding on force. Wounds one. Yeah. yeah. Let's see if I save it. Four up. Nope. And you killed the spirit. So the last of the chain rasps get to fight. So 14, 15 attacks because of the champion. Hitting on fours, yes. So 10, 14, 15 because of the champion. Hit on fours, these are from the chain rasps going into the sequidors. Fours, and I still reroll ones to hit. Because, oh no, I don't because the spirit torment's dead now. So these go away. I do still get plus one to wound though because the nightmare staff. So winning on threes. Nice. And that will be five nine saves. Whew. Nine saves. Really everything. We're gonna need it. And four pluses, doing pretty good so far. Uh, Take two. There's another guy. And so the great mace or the leader goes down. <laughs> of course, the great mace. <laughs> right. So uh, that's uh, everyone who could pile in. Actually, sorry, these guys could still pile in and fight because they were they charged this turn. So they're gonna pile in yep. three. Try and murderize over here. Murderous. Six attacks, two each. I roll all failed hit rolls in the turn that I charged. And they hit on fours. Nice. And then they're within nine of him, so they wound on twos. Nice. So that's going to be five saves. I'm fours are rolling ones, because technically the unit has... Not that it matters, the two twos will kill him. Yep. Right, so that is the combat phase. Uh, I owe you a battle shark test here, but I still am leadership ten because of my leader being in here. So mm -hmm. this will just get auto-passed. Uh, you took four casualties here. CP in it, so he's mean to battle shock. It's turn three, so let's see who's going first. Three, four. I'm gonna choose to go second so that I can pick to move the first predatory spell. Second, at the start of the turn, all the predatory spells move, and if uh, I choose to go second, that means that I get to move them. Um, actually, it doesn't even matter. I can go first. And you can choose the first predator spell to move, and it has to move in a straight line anyway. Yeah, no. So I, there's no there's no I, benefit I to me going second here. If this back. was yeah, if this was one that was that was actually ha like able to move around on its own, yeah. that would be important. But in this case, it's not. So it's gonna slide over top of because remember it's over here yeah. and go eight inches. Whoop! And do d6 mortal units to those castigators. Four poor castigators. And two of them die. Use your oh, that's true. Actually, ability to keep will. one alive with one wound. Yeah, I'll probably do that. Okay, and I get to go. So we're gonna go to Spirit Town. <laughs> And we're gonna ghost with the most over here. He's engaged still. I get to cast spells. I'm gonna heal the shreds. Eight. Would you like to spell it? Oh yeah. Roll that nine. Nope. D3 back. He heals one. He's the worst. Goes to three. My hero face stuff. Now I go back to movement. Um, so stuck, stuck, stuck. But these guys can fall back and charge in the same turn because they have their invisible drummer man. So they're actually gonna fall back over here. Nice. They can go charge Team Sequitur. Or it's really useful with the fly ability too. You can just be just fly over top everywhere. of stuff. Exactly. Uh, he's free to charge as well, so he's gonna just stand over here. Uh, he's gonna pop to the other side of this, just because he wants his ore to be everywhere. 
Shooting phase, we don't have any. Charging, spirit ghost, you're gonna charge. Five, so well within range. Go take you, your mystic shield is actually still operational. Technically, yeah. Knight of Shrouds is gonna charge. Eight. And go charge into your boss man, have a duel in the middle here. And the Glaive Ray Stalkers are gonna charge, and go nine, and charge into your sequiturs. Or your castigators, sorry. Looks like all my charges, so let's do some punching. Right. How many wounds does he have left? Three. How many wounds is Oh, they have a lot of wounds left. She's gonna activate her flasks. Okay. She's gonna use all three of them. Okay. So she's gonna take three mortal wounds and so is the other unit. Cool. Just kill one and one will be down to one mortal wound. Or one wound, sorry, one wound left. Because one had two, no, sorry, one had two left. Because one had one wound on it from the storm. I'm gonna detonate him. Hammer <laughs> yeah, you don't want to kill your last sequitur. <laughs> it might go wrong. He has become then. precious to me. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, so I'm gonna lead with the nice shrouds and he's gonna fight okay, you. Cool. Four attacks, hitting on threes. Uh, there's one, two, and of course I don't get to reroll ones anymore because the Spirit Torment's dead. And then wounding on twos though, because the Nightmare Lens gives me plus one. And I get one, so you get to uh, minus one save. Okay, four up. Oh. No, two damage. And Ooh, oh, when I wound a hero, uh, I heal one wound. Nice. Yeah, I do two, and then I gain two and go up to five. Oh, your hours, one for, one for every one I do to hero, yeah. Because I steal your hours, I drain your life force. Savage. So now you get to choose someone to buy one and fight. Uh, we're going to pick probably Grand Hammer guy. Okay. Charge up his hammer to real hits. Not a save. Not a save. Makes sense. Oh. Eleven. Ooh. Okay. There you go. That's, uh, <laughs> two hits. that's D three. That is D three. So it turns into One, two. Three. And two, two wounds. So Maybe unmodifiable two. again. Five pluses because we're ethereal. And I'll pass one. No, pass nothing. Four. And do four damage. We're gonna lose four more chain rounds. Ghost busting with that mace. Oof, All right, well, let's do the Glaive Wraith uh, Stalkers then, because they charge, so it's going to be six attacks, hitting on fours, re-rolling. And re-rolling to hit, because I charged. So four hits, winning on threes, because I'm too far away now for plus one wound. Okay. Uh, two wounds, four oh. ups, take a wound, so, so the save guy's going to die. That's right. Arcanum. Um, we're going to put all of our attacks into the boss man. Try, try kill that shroud, try makes that sense. Guy. I don't like him. So the mace, uh, sorry, the staff. Oh. Not the best, not the worst. One wound, yep. minus, doesn't matter, so four plus. I'm good. And the Mr. chicken. Mr. Chicken, who's got the best chance of actually hurting. Hits twice. Two. Two. Two four ups. Pass one fail, one takes a wound, goes back down to four. All right, here comes the Lord Executioner. I'm gonna pile in a fight. Three attacks, hitting on threes. And then uh, wounding at plus one, so wounding on twos, but five sixes do the extra damage. Oops. Box oh, cars. man. So two and minus two. No problem. You're doing great. And you take... No problem. You take... Why are you re-rolling? You powered up your mace. I used to get ones all the time, right? That you, you get ones all the time, but you didn't roll ones, did oh, you? Oh, you're right. <laughs> so that's okay. I'm so used to them being bananas, <laughs> take, you know? Take six damage. We are to see pieces like game. You can't. Yeah, you already saved somebody. <laughs> Sorry, sequitur, I always, I always the, I saved the crossbow guys instead. Uh, so the chain rascal to pile in. I don't know why he saved the chain <laughs> I'm not really sure either. That was silly. I'm not really sure. Probably because I told you to. It was all oh, mine. He's, he's gonna attack. Oh, sorry, we yeah, yes, right. Mr. Uh, the, the guy. Hits hits. Ooh, just two attacks, no. No ones, okay. So then we pile in the chain rasps. That's seven attacks, because the boss is still there. Hitting on fours. And then winning on threes, because a plus one to wound from the Nightmare Lantern here. Mm -hmm. That's one, and I don't get to reroll my ones to win because I got too few guys. Yep. Three up. Nope. nope. Three left. I'll okay. take it three, sir. Take it three. Right, your half of turn of round three, so <laughs> turn three Stormcast. <laughs> Hero phase, you gain one CP, start yep. the turn, and then you can do your magic. He's going to cast Healing Light on himself, I think. Makes sense. To try to stay in the game, why not, right? He does. Ten. All right, try to unbind with eleven. Negative. Oh, cool. So you get back D3 wounds. On an A plus, it's D6, so Oof. better chance at healing more. He heals three. three. Yeah. Not bad. Mm -hmm. Your battle shark over here. I lost you two. Lost two. That turn? Yep. So five plus, you lose a guy. Nope, you're oh, good. Ooh. Guns o'clock. Guns o'clock. So the prime. Yep. Plus one to hit. He is. He's going to reroll ones as well. And there you go. Shoot the people that she's fighting. Makes sense. Hits. D3. Three. three. And, and then three to wounds. Pretty good so far. Nope. Two. Yep. Four up. Pass one, fail one. Another one. This is important. Oh. If you split a unit now by mm. casualties, you have to take off the half of the smallest savage, half of the unit. Yeah, that's very savage, yeah. Greedy. Clock. Spirit hosts. Rapid fire. Hey, One, D6. Six. Six. Nicely done. It, pays it was off. worth it. And then three to wounds. Yep. 
four, so four four plus saves for the spirit host, because I'm on a fireball. Oh, oh geez. This one's dead, this one has one wound left. Whew. Charge phase. I think everyone's happy unless you want to charge the ballistic crew and <laughs> save the site or the castigator. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> not that, I'm not that, that, that right. greedy. I'm not right, that greedy. Uh, he's gonna fight your boss before he heals. With the staff. Connect. Threes. Ooh, Whoa. That's Whoa. Juicy. Three that's moves. juicy. It's getting serious. Oh, three. Baby. Three saves. Three four ups. That's D3 damage threes. up. Go oh. one. Can't kill me though. Three wounds. Oh, down to one. Razor chair, razor chair. Oh, wait, sorry. Oh. Sorry. You're minus one to hit because you're staring death in the face with Lord Executioner's oh, here. Okay. So just so you know, I think you hit with everything anyway. Oh, I can't mortal wound you. You can't mortal wound me though with the chicken. Uh, two hits. Two hits. Two. Threes. Two. Two wounds. Four up. Gonna make one. Nope, I'm dead. Immediately have to nominate a new general now. We'll make the Lord Executioner my general. Uh, but first, the Blade Wraith Stalkers are going to try and fight you. On fours. And then on threes. Wonder. Yeah, four up. Oh, Next wound. Fight, fight back. back. Two attacks. Force. One. And nope. nothing. I want to make an example out of you. Because <laughs> we're still in range <laughs> of the Nightmare This guy's been swinging his axe. That's right. <laughs> on threes. So three attacks on threes. Yeah. <gasps> And then fives are fives triple damage. Yep. One. One. That's triple Hit. damage, and one other one. So Hit. minus two and minus two. Uh, the minus, so the bad bad one. Yep. Take Failed. three. Other one. Take one more. And I've got my chain rasps left. So that's seven attacks and fours, and then wounding on threes because the plus mm -hmm. one wound. Two. Two saves. Regular saves. Okay, three ups. Ooh. Okay, another one. Getting that close. looks like turn three. So we're on a turn four. Let's see who goes first. Oh, no! Oh. Oh. Do you want to go first or second? I'll go first. Okay, so this moves eight <laughs> inches. Start yeah. of the turn. Just keep going straight, yep. <sighs> Swings across the table. Yeah. Or you can flask me, but you'll die if you flask. <laughs> so greedy. <laughs> <laughs> if you kill me, I kill you. We're gonna healing light. That's what I figured. <laughs> <laughs> on a Goes 10, oh, I, need I need 11. Yep. No. That would be so epic if you stop that. Uh, he heals three, three. so he's down. He's taking, taking two now. Clock. Uh, yeah, let's use some guns. So she's uh, turbocharging her shots. Okay. So she can be the one. Real ones. That makes sense. One. She only shoots once. She shoots one shot. One shot. And, and it misses. And oh no, she gets plus one hit. That's yeah. right. Yeah. One wound. Uh, it's D3, so two hits. Hmm? You rolled two hits because it's D3 because I'm a night hunt. Oh, it's only on a six to hit. She does that. Oh, that was all yeah. time. Okay. Yeah. Um, that would be amazing. Yeah, well remember it's a 5-6 for her because she's actually plus one to hit. That's true actually. So uh, one hit and four plus. We're good. Oh. This is going to try to finish the job. <laughs> one hit. D6. One. one. Oh, oh I can still do it. Threes. Threes. Got Spirit Host. Does. Not. Oh, no. She's your minus one to hit because you're staring death in the face. Fours. Oh gosh. And threes. Yep. Two. And Two. Damage D3. Four plus. Like oh, a boat. like a boss. Razor Ethereal. Can't slice you up. Nope. Two hits though. Two hits, yep. Yeah. One, One wound. For boss. Last. We've got uh, Team Glaber Stalker's gonna fight your one wound remaining castigator. Yeah. Hit once. It's not enough. Back to attacks. Nope. nope. Right, here we go. Mr. Executioner oh, hitting on threes with his big axe. All hit. Oh, and then five well, sixes are three damage. Wound, right? It's five threes to wound and fives will be the decapitating no, strikes. Oh, there you go. Just three. one wound. Minus two. I, I did whiff. Right. <laughs> right. I, encourage <laughs> I encourage that. I encourage that to happen. <laughs> and so I've got seven attacks with the chain rasps. Not good. Uh, four, it's not bad. Yeah. And then we're on threes because of the Nightmare Lantern. That's uh, three. Yep. Threes. Good one. Now it looks like the combat phase. No battle shocks for either of us. And it's over to me. We're going to use some healing from the uh, Mr. The. Oh, I could just also do that. I could just also do that instead. You're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna put the thing where the thing is. This? Start of my hero phase. So I'm gonna try and dispel this on a six. Yeah. And I do. Goes away. Okay. Cast it again <laughs> on a six. Goes off with an eight. Okay, I'm gonna a nine. I have to stop this, otherwise bad things. Oh god. Dun, dun, dun. It's gonna go right oh here. It's gonna be totally within six. So it doesn't touch my uh, guys. Oh, uh, it's not gonna touch your guys. Uh, it's just gonna go in a straight line yeah. directly towards that catapult. <laughs> There's eight. It's gonna kill my Glaive Wraiths, but I don't really care about them at this point, because it's also who? gonna kill you. Glaive Wraiths who? <laughs> D6 mortal wounds I to your boss. Just don't do it. Oh, Four. it's a just it's enough. Dead. It's just enough. <laughs> does D6 wounds to your Castigator. Kills oh. her. And then does D6 wounds to my Glaive Wraith Stalkers. 
You can do that one. Oh, good. Yeah. Six did that too. It's just like, it's just coming for you. It's just murder. It's just moving it's towards just you. I've got my moving phase now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to just watch, yeah. and then I'm going to go over here and watch. And go over here and well, actually, no, we're gonna go behind. Keep them close to the yeah. infantry. So well, because we'll I get minus one to hit then, yeah. yeah. That's my movements. Turn five. Doesn't really matter who goes first because you're gonna get hit by a giant pendulum. It in a matters! Second. Three, four. It's you, anyway. It's moving in a straight line, so it just d dives right over top of them and does D6 wounds. Wham! Five more and just annihilate some of them sour. <laughs> the game is the Aether Void Pendulum. <laughs> <laughs> As it shows up and just wrecks everything. So there you go, the Aether Void Pendulum stealing victory from the jaws of defeat as the giant blade comes out of the oh. sky and just like slices through reality. Um, so I think we probably, we managed to I think highlight pretty much every new aspect of the game. The command point abilities were really key with your sequiturs yeah. and Lord Arcanum casting that stuff. Um, the endless spells had a bunch of relevance. First turn, you just like you dropped the mirrors on me and then blew up, blew up one of my heroes almost to the point where he's dead. Uh, <laughs> with like how many consecutive tens was that? Like three or four? Oh, yeah. You just dropped Castle tens. Attack. It was like Love yeah, it was like spells. box guys, box guys, box oh, guys. Okay. Came in to spell this. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I turned it around too because the mirrors come both ways because yeah. the endless spells aren't really friendly to you. Uh, the pendulum is handy because once you pick a direction it's moving, it's always moving that direction. But if I was to summon like the um, the Geminids that I also had, or like the Quicksilver Swords or something like that, they can just wander around and whoever goes second during the battle round gets to move them. Yeah. They're gets to pick the first one to move and then make attacks and stuff. So the uh, I think the, the highlight there is that they can be really, really game altering or really, really irrelevant. And some of them are really good. Like the Chronomantic Cogs basically just doubling down. It's solid. Yeah. Oh, wow. Because you can yeah. bolt and heal each round with the Lord Arcanum then, which is super huge. Uh, and if he wasn't mortal wounding me like he was with the your uh, never ending spell, yeah. like, like she would have been a lot more survivable. Too. Absolutely, she yeah. Three up with the rerolls. Three up with the reroll because you're rerolling your saves all yeah. of a sudden for the cogs as well, which is huge. Stick him in a building, two up with the reroll. Like if she'd just been standing on top of that that bunch. that tower, bring the cogs I mean, the in. Blade was still killed her. <laughs> the blade was still killed her. Yeah, nothing nothing stops the, the reality altering okay. blade, um, which is pretty handy. But it's just it's it's interesting because they're not required. Like you don't have to have this stuff to play the game, but the malign sorcery box basically just adds. 20 something new units to every army. It's just really cool. Yeah. Um, and if you look in the General's Handbook, and this is really cool, there's three upcoming endless spells for both the Stormcast and the Night Haunts, and it looks like every release going forward is going to get new endless spells too. So there'll be more unique faction associated endless spells to go with these realm based ones that everyone's going to have access to. I so just, I, I think I just love the, the, the continued effort for Games Workshop to like make more things visual on the table. Yeah. It's just really cool. Well, what's the point of playing with Twice Soldiers if yeah. it's not immersive, right? Yeah. Like if it's, not, if it's not a spectacle, yeah. I, I don't see the point. And this is, I think, the, one of the strongest additions to Age of Sigmar is these these they're not part of your army like you buy this part of your army but they're not necessarily controlled by you these like wild things of magic that are on the table now doing stuff mm -hmm. it, it kind of started with uh, what was that expansion that had like the the battle magic stuff in 8th Oh shoot, Storm Magic. Storm Magic. It kind of started with Storm Magic. They didn't quite get it, I think, as as like on on the nose as they did here. But they really just they they've really added something to the game that makes it really special and and it's just fun. And it's what I like the best is because it's such a blocky, not granular point system. If you've got like twenty or forty points left over to spend, you just buy them the spell. Like they're yeah. super affordable. They run between twenty and like a hundred for like the Purple Sun. Um, but it means that you've got like that little bit extra to, to buy stuff with. What do you think of the army? You played Stormcast for a long time. You played them in tournaments. Yeah, you're, I, you're, you're, you're a Depticon veteran. I have, I have so many of them, and and and, and they've done a really good job of making like these new units feel unique. I think. Which is, yeah, like yeah. I, I will say the the sequiturs feel like they're just better liberators. Though I think that's going to be a, a, a definitely a thing. That, uh, <laughs> that a lot of people are going to think right off the bat just because they for twenty points more. They do everything better. Everything better. Everything they they better. always yeah. hit consistently all the time now. Their grand weapon is just as good, but also more consistent because it's threes yeah. and threes. Um, and then they can just juice their saves in the combat phase, or they can juice their to hits. And the to hit juicing is just everything. Like it's not like they just reroll ones. It's just everything. Reroll hits with, and when you start getting some of those maces going, it's going to be bananas. Well, it's th it's, it's one out of three, times. not one out of five. <laughs> so and you and there's a model in the starter set too that you didn't see because I didn't think of it at the time. That's actually armed with one, so you can have your prime have one too. Which is like a no-brainer. Like everyone's gonna be yelling at me. Like I'm just no, no, because it's only three. One for three, okay. So, so in a ten-man unit, you're, gonna you're have only gonna, gonna have seven attacks with maces that reroll to hit. Ooh, okay. Threes and threes damage too. Like this unit just becomes, a, like I said, a, a blender and of better. The downside is my general has to be like the guy that you the guy don't want to have anyway. Your army. <laughs> the Lord so Arcanum, because he's got built-in healing, yeah. uh, a better arcane bolt, and. You don't have to go into your. The biggest thing is now there's wizards in the stormcast. You don't have to go into your ally last to bring a mage. You know what's super? Because that's what you had to do before. 
Yeah, exactly. And, and super cool is is that ability to keep a model alive is going to be super oh interesting. Gosh. Like Salston Prime, imagine with a prime or a, a Prime. Lift, yeah, that's right. The big Drake. Like like, yeah, Drake's like, from Templar or something like that. That's going to be really. Or he's just like, oh, you didn't die. Yeah. <laughs> and the next turn I heal you D6 wounds. <laughs> it's it's battle round though, I think, not yeah. turn. It's turn, it said. It's, it's turn. It's turn so. so you can do it during your turn and during his turn. So if you've got a big centerpiece you want to save it for, you can just keep him on his feet forever and then cast healing on him afterwards. He's very good. He's it's very good. bonkers. Um, I think the previously empty War Machine slot for the Stormcast is now like just... It's only 100 points. Just so easy to put in your army. It's it's so versatile, too. You can just hit some. It's basically an extra 30 second range um, if you're not taking Judicator's, uh, what is it, the Starfire Bow, where it's yeah. just D6 hits all the time. Uh, yeah. Or you can try and YOLO it, take a Lord Ordinator. Yolo. Well, because you can buy CPs, imagine you. So if, let's say you have an enemy who wants to come to you. They will move towards you, and then turn one, you fire four times on, or sorry, you, yeah, you have two of them, and you have them each fire twice. So all of a sudden you've got 16 four plus D6 hits per. For 340 points. For 340 points. I think, I think points. you're gonna see a lot of, a lot of that little technical. Little bastion. Armies, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's allyable in any order army too. That's four points of just, right, so. yeah, of just like awesome ballista is just showing up everywhere. You can even put a griff hound with them too, so they can shoot things that show up. It's bananas. <laughs> oh, that's so silly. <laughs> Actually, no you can't. Because no. Griff Hounds are six per unit Ooh. now. There's no more one man bark barks. The one man, poor Shellington. Shellington's getting retired because <laughs> Shellington was my 40 points. Well, of, you can leave awesome. a whole unit of Griff Hounds. I have now. to. Well, no, Shellington was my turtle uh, that I converted uh, to be a Griff Hound in my uh, my my uh, oh, cool. my Ident Deepkin army. Shellington now has to have five friends. <laughs> <laughs> it's right, yeah. He he was actually in, in a game that you'll see upcoming. Uh, uh, the, he ran around in the um, what is it? The uh, the relocation orb. There's a mission in the New General's Handbook where you have a central objective and it moves every turn oh, and it runs cool. around. So we used the turtle for it. Oh, and he just yeah. he ran around basically between the two armies <laughs> and he could be held every turn. It was progressively scored too, so it was yeah. really handy. Um, uh, the night haunts they feel like a real army now. Like I can see sort of like the fun skew of just taking nothing but storm uh, spirit hosts as your battle line because previously that's what the night haunts had. And obviously there's a book coming for both the Sacrosanct Chamber and the Night Haunts. So there's more stuff we don't know about yet that's just hinted at in the General's Handbook. You see the names and the point costs, but not like the rules or anything. Uh, but the Chain Rasps are just exactly what the Night Haunts needed. This huge, super tough horde. Yeah. That's de Once you stack buffs on them, a decent damage like I put as well. A lot of dice too. Right? Like yeah, thing, it's right? too so well, and I can even CP them all for plus more attack yeah. as well. So if I want to double up, I could have sixty attacks potentially if I can get them all into one inch. Um, hitting on fours, rerolling ones. Winning on threes, rerolling ones. And that's, a, that's, I mean, there's no rendering like that, but that's just a huge yeah. amount of dice yeah. you throw out. Yeah. Uh, and then still being leadership 10 as long as the unit leader's alive, which he's going to be until the last guy dies. And a five plus all the time ethereal save. It's yeah. pretty great. Yeah. Um, the mix of characters in the Soul Wars box is just on point. Like it's, they're so good. Yeah. Yeah. You you have this awesome like support team basically of a guy to get plus one to wound with the Nightmare Lantern, who's also a wizard, so you get a wizard to cast, who can heal and summon. Um, a guy that can get plus one attacks to command ability, who's also just good at dueling. The Executioner, who's just like my favorite. You, you know, I looked at this card before the game, I was like, eh. And then he's just smashing Oh, guys. wow. Well, as soon as you wow. realize that his the, the yeah. plus one to wound from the Nightmare Lantern is making him on five plus, get that decapitating strike. Just get Getting, getting a lot of work. Well, it's and it's great against units because all of a sudden he's doing nine damage. So like he's just sweeping blows through guys and like exploding them all. And then the minus one to hit for heroes is super relevant too because you can yep. get, it's a defensive buff, which is really handy for keeping your heroes alive. The um, sort of stolen hours getting some healing back was nice too, and then it shrouds. Uh, is he, is and then he, is he the guy that gives plus one to wound as well with his no plus one to wound is actually from the wizard from the nightmare lantern. Yeah, he's awesome too. I yeah, like him. <laughs> but uh, then you got finally the, um, the spirit torment, which I think is again going to be you didn't get to see it because he died right before I got to do it. But during the battle shock phase, if three or more models die, he heals D three people, or if it's stormcast guys who died, automatically three. So if you hadn't killed him right then, if I'd been smart and just killed you with the Gladiator of Stalkers before yeah. um, you piled in and fought, because I, I piled in and fought into a fight that had already gone off, so there was no point in me doing it, uh, I would have just killed you with the Gladiator of and then he would have like brought back all the wounds on the boss or healed like more chain rasps or whatever. And I actually never healed the chain rasps the entire game, and they were still like super durable. Like they still just like I had three guys left at a twenty at the end, One and they fought like everything in your army. Turns of fighting, <laughs> yeah. Just like why are there guys here still? Because <laughs> well, I'm not unless you do over <laughs> unless you do like over like six or seven wounds. I'm probably not filling a battle shock test. Another thing too is the five plus save. 
unmodified is like it's a good when there's good 20 save. dudes that's a that's a decent yeah, save absolutely dice getting saves so. yeah so uh, i've got i basically what i did here was uh i got the soul wars box i painted it up and i grabbed the malignance box which is a great value box i think it's like 60 or 70 bucks and it's uh hex wraith spirit host and a tomb a cairn wraith yeah. and i painted that up too so i took the with that one box basically i managed to take the soul wars box to easily a thousand points mm -hmm. um and i've still got the hex wraith to paint and the the tomb the cairn wraith to paint as well and i got a banshee too on top of that just for some shooting because I don't have a shooting face. I can scream at somebody for for one shooting face thing, um, and that's like a it's a super solid army. Like it's nice and viable. I do recommend getting the spirit host so you can make that one twenty man unit of chain rasps as opposed to two tens because I think that's just way more valuable and have them be one battle line instead of two. So what do you think uh, for people picking up more stormcast? Uh, well, what do you think for so so for soul wars. I think you want to buy those easy to buy boxes because the box is designed for that. Yeah. Those easy to buy boxes, easy to build boxes, sorry, easy to buy. Easily get your sequiturs to uh, tap. <laughs> well, they're they're built know. they're built to make it yeah. that way. So yeah. you get two uh, battle lines out of it now, yeah. as opposed to one. Um, you'll finish off because we didn't get to show off the the which the the evocators, and they're like the coolest unit in the Stormcast army. And there's only three in the box. So I'd have to either field them under strength and not really show off like the yeah. spells and stuff, or this is 200 points. They're they're paladins. Yeah. They're four plus armor. Three, put three wounds, um, but they're paladins that basically have built-in storm soul mace, star, star soul maces. Like it's each one of them uh, at the end of the combat phase on a four plus does two more wounds. Like they just do more wounds themselves. They reroll shots from shooting because of the the lightning between their weapons, um, and they fight with I think it's four threes and threes attacks at run minus one. So they're just basically protectors swinging their big their big like stab sticks. And yeah, they only get three in the box, so. They, would, they didn't work for this demo, basically. <laughs> basically, But I think there's... Actually, sorry, there's not an easy build box for them either. So maybe they're coming in a paint set or something. I don't know. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll and, see where they end I'm up. Sure, I'm sure there's going to be some... Uh some of these kits are going to be released in box sets. Absolutely. Multi well, the oh, Castigator yeah. box comes with a Griffhound too, which is weird. It's Griffhounds and oh, Castigators. Yeah, that's true, yeah. So it's like a mixed box. And then the unit you didn't see from the... Um, the Night Haunts is the, uh, the the Reavers, the, the big guys with the... the basically baby wraiths. Because there's only four and they're a unit of ten. In the in general's handbook, so I didn't bother putting them together, uh, but they'll be they'll be a good add-on, I think. I honestly think it's just a sucking into sequiturs, <laughs> or something to make the sequiturs ginormous, or judicators because they can be a second battle line because it's still a stormcast army. So no matter who your general is, they can be battle line. Um, but yeah, no, just more sequiturs. Really, like if yeah. you just had two units of ten sequiturs, and just march forward in front of everything, they're pretty great. Like if you just want to grind the army, um, which means you could just buy the box and swap. I'm going to be tempted, yeah, to, to just find a trading partner and, and just try just to do the half and half. Like you, it'll you'll end up with a few awkward models, but you do either way. So yeah. I'd rather have uh, you know. 15 sequiturs and yeah. 10 castigators and uh, two ballistas. Yeah. Yeah. If you really want to, if, <laughs> like, if, you, if you're going to play the Night Haunt side, I would honestly say that besides that Malignant's box, just getting Malign Sorcery. Because you're because there's like, there's 20 something spells in there and you have access to all of them. And you, when you're rounding out your odd points trying to go to like 1,000 or 1,500 points, they just count as other units. Yeah. So they don't count, there's no limit to how many you can take. And you can also buy CPs too for 50 points each. So like that box as well is um, is super handy for both sides because there's there's things in there that you really want. Like honestly, the Chronomatic Cogs I really want with the Night Haunts because I only have one wizard right now. So having him be able to cast twice per turn really, really changes things, especially if I'm taking endless spells because I'm either healing or taking my own little spells, one of the, one of those two. Yeah, you don't want to be choosing between the two. You kind of want to right. So you kind of want to bring the cogs out early on, but then he also needs to be up front because if he's not up front, I don't get his plus one wound. It's he's a balancing act a little bit as far as like as doing that stuff. So luckily, I have a huge stormcast army already, so I can I can experiment. But for the night haunts, I'm pretty happy with just painting the malignants right now, and then just seeing what comes out when the book comes out. So yeah. we'll I think we'll revisit both of these when. The new iron book for both of them come out because obviously you're going to be painting up the. We'll, we'll tentatively put up a, a, a match play game in the future between yeah. us when you have your night hunt finished and, and you'll have your storm casts. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. You're going to do your, do your, do your soccer sanctuary chamber. We'll keep this rivalry going. That's okay, man. I'm the ghost of the most. <laughs> so I'm bringing my end of spells. <laughs> gonna be, uh, you're going to paint sandworms and beetle juice. That's how that's how this is going to be. Uh, so um, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Now, if you want to see more about just uh, the top things that have changed in the edition, you can click the link below and check out that. And of course, if you want to see my review of um, the three big sort of like expansions. So it's going to be the Soul Wars box set, uh, the Malign Sorcery box set where I go through like the components and stuff too and do like a kind of an unboxing and the General's Handbook 2018. You can click the link for that one too. And then on Saturday, you'll see on the painting table, I'll talk more about how I painted all this stuff in a eye melting six days. <laughs> so I'm a little bit tired. 
I got all this stuff six days ago, and I paid everything you saw on the table today. So <laughs> <laughs> it's been a bit of a, a bit of a job. Sure. So I hope you guys enjoyed that um, preview. It's a weird midweek one. Uh, if you guys watch this in the future, it's coming on a Thursday because normally these happen on Saturdays, but. But I'm, I'm allowed to talk about this on a Thursday now, which is pretty exciting. Um, for I think just for this one to just to, to show it off early. Uh, we're getting we're, well. This, most of the stores like us, we're getting our uh, our box sets like this week. Oh, that makes sense. That's probably why. So, That's probably so I might why. have my. Stores this week too. There you go, and you can start painting. So, it. so, <laughs> so anyway, we'll see you for more of this in the future. Of course, check it Saturday. You can see this painting stuff and check out the other videos if you want to know more. Uh, big thanks to Chris for coming in and filming yeah, this with me. Big thanks to you guys for watching. We'll see you then. Uh, until then, I'm Ash. Have a good evening. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below to get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Deathrite Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.